Uh, I'll tame them to start with, then we'll introduce you in a second. <laughs> okay, so you guys are attending episode 46 of the Downtown Podcast, and this is a very special episode. But before we get into it, I want to explain to the people that are visiting just what this is about. So this is the, this is the community right here. This is all volunteer project. And what we do is every Thursday we fill the Ticket Cake living room with friends and volunteers to talk about the news events and people that matter most to our community. So the reason we get amazing volunteers like Chelsea for the first time, Alexis and Jackie and Sean to come help each week is because we all believe that what's happening downtown is something that is going to be important for the world because it's how to have the feel of a community at the scale of a city. But it's not a blueprint that you can actually give to an architect. It's the kind of thing that you have to see and you have to feel and it has a lot to do with culture. So we put the show on to kind of document how this works. So just sit back and have some beers. If you have a bunch of stuff you're worried about at home, you can forget about it for an hour and just feel how good the community is doing as a whole, how many, how far their steps are going as a community. A guest host doesn't have an Australian accent this week. <laughs> so coming back to the American accent, we have Chelsea, who's with Wealthly. Now you are, tell me your official title over there. I am the glue of Wealthly. I'm the community connector. So my role kind of, and yes, I don't have an Australian accent or any kind. I'm sorry about sorry, that. We'll forgive I can you. try, but it's great. yeah, feel um, more at home anyways. But I'm trying to connect the community <laughs> in a health and wellness standpoint, whether it's doing fitness events, maybe at Container Park, or maybe we can organize uh, intramurals down here, or shout out to the running group that's here as well. Um, oh, yeah. Just getting more people active and engaged in the community is kind of what my role is. Okay. Now, one of, we had a really interesting conversation uh, about, a, about a week ago where we mm -hmm. talked about these, they're called blue zones, and these are actually the places inside, or it's the entire world, where people are living longer than other places, right? So they, they went to these blue zones, that they call them, and tried to figure out what the, what the healthy factors are. Yep. And we would maybe talk a little bit more about that and then the survey that we're doing to find out really where, how, how long we're all going to live. Yeah, so the Blue Zones no. Project kind of identified nine principles that help people live well over 100 years old. And so they wanted to look at why this longevity. And so what Dylan and I decided to do was kind of create a survey, figuring out what people are doing here in downtown um, based on habits and maybe what you guys would like to see um, and what you love about downtown as well and how we can kind of combine those things so everybody's living well over 100 years old to party it up in downtown Container Park, right. which just opened up, or Gold Spike, uh, whatever it is. So if you have a chance, fill out that survey for us. Right, so at the end of the show, we'll be walking around. We have some iPads with them. There'll also be a link on the website and with the newsletter that goes out. And if you guys aren't subscribed, go to downtownpodcast.tv. You can actually subscribe to get these um, each week when they're posted, which is on Sunday. And then uh, for the sponsor this week, we actually usually have somebody from the um, neighborhood who sponsors it. This week, we didn't have a sponsor, so Ticket Cake, which is my company, um, we decided to sponsor it. So you can thank Ticket Cake for the beer. And uh, as a quick rundown for the, uh, if you want to contact us, you can go to the downtownpodcast.tv and let us know if you're interested in being a beer sponsor. It pays for the beer and it pays for a, um, a dinner that we give to the volunteers beforehand for their time that they, they donate to the project. And then if you're um, throwing any events, come talk to us. That's what Tiki Cake specializes in. We focus on that Zappo style customer service on the front end and we do a bunch of analytics and tracking and stuff on the back end so we can tell you a lot about your customers. So if you guys have any events coming up, definitely contact us for that. Now we get a chance to jump right into the news section, so let's just do it. All right, so I get to start it off, and Amy is with us here today to talk a little bit about something cool that's going on um, and with the Ogden Underpass. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you for having me tonight. So Colab Las Vegas is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we we uh, have created a platform for designers and local artists to be able to showcase their design talent in the city in hopes that more projects will stay locally here. And recently, we got a commission from the City of Las Vegas Cultural Affairs and Public Works uh, to do a uh, to facilitate a new public art project that will go under the underpass at Ogden and Main Street. So we're super excited about that. And this came about because people wanted to walk to from downtown uh, to the Smith Center and to Symphony Park, and it feels kind of dark. And so the city's solution to that was let's install art, which is really amazing that a solution to not feeling safe 
becomes art for our project. And so it gives an opportunity for 10 local designers and artists to compete for that commission in teams of three. Okay. So it was very exciting. Very cool. And you guys already have these uh, groups picked out who are going to be competing? Yep. So we put together three groups uh, based off of top talent. We were looking for top talent in our city. So if you were in the design community and uh, the art community, uh, we were also looking for people that uh, could collaborate together. So it didn't matter how talented you were. If you can't collaborate in groups, you know, it's not going to really work out because we expect people to come together and really quickly over a weekend come up with concepts for this uh, art project. Um, and then we we're also looking for people that were super passionate about the project. Uh, the project is has a the city asked us to for the project to be vintage Vegas neon sign themed. Um, which oh, cool. we yeah, so we have the opportunity to tie it back to the Neon Museum, which is a really amazing project that we have here in Las Vegas to celebrate our history. Because these signs, when you go to the Neon Museum, have all these stories behind them, and it really has helped to define our city. In a lot of ways, it is our architecture. And so these guys, uh, we got to go to the Neon Museum um, and spend some time there and really uh, take it in um, before kicking off and doing these workshops where they'll design and compete for it. So when we we were interviewing and talking to people to be a part of this project when we got the response like mm, you know if I have time that's cool I was like eh, next yeah. you know because we were looking for people that really like, do you love neon yeah, like, like, yeah, like, oh like, my god I love Las Vegas right. I love neon like this is a really cool opportunity um, so those are were kind of the three uh, factors that um, took top priority for selecting those ten designers and it became pretty easy you cool. know, so. Okay, and where can people learn more? CollabLV.org is what we have here. Any other URLs or anything you'd like to share? Yep, we're on Twitter. Everything's CollabLV. We okay. make it easy for people. So Twitter, Facebook, um, our website. Good, you nabbed them all, huh? Yeah, yeah we got them a, all. It's like the battle of all the startups trying <laughs> to get know. those all. Got to make it easy. All right, Alexis here. And talk a little yeah. bit about what's going on at the third annual Startup Luncheon. Yeah, T-Ban is hosting their third annual um, startup luncheon at the Rob Roy Innovation Center um, next Wednesday, December 11th at 1130. And we have um, four great um, startups presenting and um, we will also have a panel afterwards that will be moderated by Jackie and um, Brady Dean from Originate and yeah. the um, companies that are coming to present, we have our um, Just College. Move Line, Stitch Factory, and Banjo. All star lineup. Yes. Yeah, I like yes. It. So we're really excited. And because we love the Downtown Podcast so much, we are giving away oh. a free lunch for next week. Woo. Who so, likes food? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who has Guy in the back. I love it. The girls in tech stickers on the back of their chairs. Okay, yeah, so you have to help your neighbor out or the yeah. person you're in front of. But I'll look on the back of your chairs. We're looking for this green. We have it up on screen, but uh, green circle girls in tech. There should be two of them, too. There should be two. There should be two. Okay, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Okay. Oh. One, two, three, shoot. Oh. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, shoot. Oh. Ooh. They're like they're already on the same page. It's gonna happen now. It's gonna happen. That's how yeah. yeah. That's how that's how we should do startup weekends. See if they if they get the same thing three times in a row, they're on a team. That's how yeah. it works. <laughs> That'd be super random though. Okay, well so since since not everybody won, what kind of URLs can people check out if they want to actually get a ticket another way? Um if you go to our website, which is tban.com, or you can check out our Twitter, which is at tban um, Vegas. Is that it? <laughs> and, um, and, um, and we have a really great T Band meetup page, so join and be part of uh, T Band, and um, we can't wait to see everyone. Yeah, next week. see, I told, I told you yeah. they freeze up sometimes. <laughs> it happens. This is the thing, you gotta be careful. It happens, it's all good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you very much, Alexis. Yes, Give these guys a big round of applause. Appreciate you, Amy. Thank you so much. That's good. <laughs> the theme for the events this
this week. So have you guys seen the SNL skit, the hashtag mm -hmm. sign? So this one is hashtag, hashtag Vegas Tech, so the December events for this week. Um, event number one is the Lean Startup Conference live stream for this year at Work in Progress. Nice. So Monday, December 9th through Wednesday, December 11th, uh, starting at 9 a.m. and then going through 9 p.m. on December 11th at Work in Progress. Um, the biggest names in Lean Startup around the world are plus dozens of terrific speakers who you don't know that uh, have must-hear advice for all entrepreneurs. Um, thousands of, of them are gathering for the conference in San Francisco. So Vegas Tech Fund was named an official simulcast partner for Las Vegas. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. we'll absolutely, and we'll be streaming the entire event there at the Sixth Street location, uh, free of charge. Right, and if, if everybody, yeah. and if anybody's looking to raise money, you should know Andy's a big fan of lean startup methodology, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also something that helped our company a lot early on. So I definitely recommend it. You know, get if you're if you're writing that big long business plan and you're a tech company, like mm, go to this thing. See if that's really what you should be doing, and if that's the right kind of dynamic move you should be making. Yeah, I'll even be there checking it out too. And I think it'll be cool. Good. Um, one of the next events for Vegas Tech is the Tech Cocktail Week. Nice. And Tech Cocktail, the speaker series downtown sponsored by Local Motors this time, is Thursday, December 12th from 5 to 8 p.m. And um, Tech Cocktail and Downtown Project are inviting everybody out. And they have a bunch of guests who come out and talk about things that they're really super passionate about. Uh, speakers this time include Craig Cannon, who is the product director of Cultivated Wit, nice, yeah. and Michael Chasson, who is the founder and CEO uh, Social Radar, and co-founder and former CEO of Blackboard. Very cool. Um, yeah, Tech Cocktail Week is always a great week. Um, third event for Hashtag Vegas Tech is the Downtown Happy Hour with the Girls, girls in Tech. Girls in Tech. Any yes. girls in tech in town? Whoop, whoop. Oh, just Dan? <laughs> oh, where's that? <laughs> Usually, yeah. Um, so so you, I'm so used stickers. to having a whole crew there. Yeah, yeah. Christina and everybody. But, uh, but that's good. We used the stickers earlier, of course. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. so they'll usually come out. We try to give them a shop, uh, <laughs> shout out uh, when, they're, when they are around. They're able to make it. Um, <laughs> And so uh, Friday, December 13th at 6.30 p.m. on Park on Fremont, they are having a um, happy hour down there. So kind of a social event for all the ladies representing in the community. Um, and are able, they give education, encouragement, advice for women who are entrepreneurs. So go to Park on Fremont, have a beer for me, and check them out. Right, and anybody who's got their cell phone on them right now, that's got, so you let them know, hashtag downtown podcast misses you. We'll, we'll, we'll get them here, we'll make them regret it. Absolutely, they'll be here <laughs> next week for sure. We'll get so them we'll, into we'll, it. We'll bully them into supporting <laughs> that's us. That's right, peer pressure, good peer pressure. <laughs> and then uh, one of our other events that we have coming up is the High Tech Vegas Holiday Mixer. Um, and that is uh, at the Hyde Bellagio. Uh, you have a chance to network with over 120 technology companies all in one area. And um, you have a chance to mix and mingle, conduct business with them, uh, make some new friends, new yeah. contacts with if them. You, if you see the Bellagio fountains from the backside, it's, it's a whole different thing. You know, it's, it's cool. all reversed. It'll blow your mind. It's <laughs> like seeing it for see the first them. time Finally again. Finally got yeah. to see them, absolutely. <laughs> and you can register on Ticket Cake for that. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, let's throw it over to Rachel, um, and she's going to talk a little bit about the ugly sweater pub crawl, yeah. which yeah. I know is ready with my dinosaur sweater, but you definitely outdid me. Yes, I, this is my ugly sweater. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're having an ugly sweater pub crawl. Um, let's get elfed up. Uh, it's December <laughs> It's December 14th at 6.30 um, at Stitch Factory. We're going to start it off there. Um, we're going to have light bites, a DJ, a photographer, and then head out to the bars and hop around around 7.30. So we're going to go stop at Nacho Daddy, um, Commonwealth Park, Beauty Bar, and they have a lot of great specials going on for this. So we're really excited. It's going to be a great time. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, awesome. so where can people, t talk about URLs and uh, where people can buy tickets. So Facebook, we have a Facebook event. Um, you can sign up on Ticket Cake, um, RSVP. Oh, so nice. it's $20, yeah. um, or you can donate a toy for Toys for Tots. It's all going back for Toys for Tots. So. Why not celebrate? Oh, right, absolutely. yeah. Great and cause. you guys had a chance, too, to uh, make your own ugly sweaters, right? Yes, we do. We have an ugly sweater workshop going on right now. Um, so we've had a lot of people come in there. They've had a lot of fun. Um, do, you, do you make this? I actually made this. <laughs> oh, OK. That so you just, you just went and got the regular red, made. and then you were Yeah, like, I just got the red sweatshirt. And you just, let your, you just let your mind go wild, huh? Yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yes, it's a great sweater. <laughs> Always very <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to find one. So if anybody out there has donations, I'm still looking for one. I left mine in Iowa. Oh, yeah. So I have to get my own ugly sweater well, now, now so I can bring mine out, too. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm going to give one the fits, you know? <laughs> it's a little too small. But, um, all right, well, that's good. Okay, so yeah, everybody at TikiCake.com has got the registration, mm -hmm. support a good cause, and check out stitchfactory.com. And thank you very much yeah. for coming out, thank Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you. and that's it. Thank you guys. So our next guest is from Columbia University. He works with one of the world's leading progressive business media brands, Fast Company. And we're lucky enough to have him coming to visit the downtown project this week. And we get a chance to learn a little bit about what's going on inside the head of a journalist who's coming to visit us. So this will be a fun run. And I'm excited to introduce our guest, Austin Carr. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, okay, so, so the main thing is we have, a, we have a lot of startups here, a lot of companies that kind of do the under $500,000 initial raise, they, a lot of startup weekend type things, and press is such a big deal for getting traction. And I'd love to try to get um, inside your head a little bit and help you help us understand what, I, what, what kind of articles you guys really look for. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, the best way, I wish I printed out, sometimes I do this uh, to, when I'm talking to entrepreneurs, uh, my inbox every day, I get about probably 100 <clears throat> to 200 emails and all of them are pitches. Um, so every time you email me, the odds of me responding are, you know, 1%, maybe one out of 200. And for a journalist, you're just basically reading the headlines and then marking as, you know, mark as read. Right. Uh, frankly, you're not reading star, most of the emails. Checkbox, and I mean, let me just pull out my phone and- Oh yeah, please do. Uh, yeah. You, you, I can read you some of on screen. I know, I know. I can read you some of the shittier ones, but, um, <laughs> so, ooh. So yeah, I mean, for example, right? Yeah, um, I got this one. Cake, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. It's fine. It's yeah. It's not a ticket. Yeah, cake, okay, okay. But that's one of the shitty ones. So <laughs> interview question mark. This is the subject line. Uh, I'm not going to say this guy's name because I don't want to embarrass him. But you know, blank blank launches 2.0 small business marketplace app. What does that mean? That's the most general thing in the world. I'm just right. going to skip over it completely so quickly because everyone's launching a marketplace app. Everyone's launching probably a small business app at some point. And so for me, the apps that I look for, the, the startups that I look for, the ones that are going to captivate me with that subject line in much the same way that I want to captivate my reader with a headline. Okay. Um, and okay. so the, the, you know, the best way I think about it is when a PR person pitches me, I always say, Honestly, would you talk to your best friend about this, your mom about this, you know, when you're out drinking, will you talk to your friends about this? And if it's not the case, then we're probably not going to write about it just because if it's not sort of that compelling thing that makes you want to talk about it with your friends and, and you get excited about it and use the service, then it's not worth writing about. So Okay. So so are you are you also saying you're kind of almost subject agnostic as far as you do look for the passion um, in general? Yeah, or? no, I mean, I, I do have okay, to what kind sort of, of, yeah. Tell me about the subjects that you're most interested in. Sure. Um, well, so some good examples, you know, let's say it's got to be always something actionable and very specific. So if you're raising a funding round, uh, if you know this is backed by someone specific, if it, this is a common, common credit. If you ever read sort of anything on tech meme these days, it's always you know Eric Schmidt backed X Y Z or even Tony <laughs> right. Shea backed X Y Z, and that you know sort of gives you a level of credibility. Uh, otherwise, it's got to be about something like very specific that you're launching. So it, it's either a service that you're disrupting, a field that you're playing in that's either tension, there's drama, or a character that's going to stand out because if you don't have those elements um, then you know if you don't have that sort of entrepreneur like an Eric Schmidt that's going to sort of be compelling and someone that you want to read about then uh, again we're just not gonna sort of take the time because we just don't have enough of it to, to write about all these really cool startups but uh, you know ones that might not fit in the pages right. of the magazine so uh, well, maybe you can give me like a breakdown of how, what percentage of um, the stories that you end up writing about are just coming from these cold emails, and if yeah. not, if they're coming from real life, where are you meeting people usually? Yeah, I mean, so actually, the the, the way I get most of my stories is from people like you uh, coming to events like this. And by the way, I should say it's been great so far. I've had really oh, wonderful yeah, yeah. weeks. So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, and sort of just, it, it's it's very bizarre coming <laughs> into this space, to be honest. And it's sort of like I keep getting tours everywhere, and I didn't pay for anything, so I don't know how this right. keeps happening. <laughs> Right, yeah. Um, so you haven't bought the, the timeshare yet? No, oh, I don't. Oh, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I thought it was around the corner, yeah. Uh, 
I have to sign something when I leave. Yeah. Um, but so when I do, you know, every time I meet with an entrepreneur, especially ones that I sort of get to know, um, I always ask them, you know, what are you paying attention to? What, what's your next investment? Who's the entrepreneur that's really, man, that guy is doing something cool. That girl okay. is doing something awesome. And that's how I get sort of a lot of my leads. Uh, in terms of how I come up with my story ideas, mo it's, it's pretty sort of organic. Most of the story ideas are the ones that I come up with on my own or with my editor. Uh, it's not the ones that are in pitches. With that said, that doesn't mean oh, a pitch might give yeah. me a lead on a company, but the angle that we write about um, is not necessarily the one that the PR company wants us to write about. Because frankly, that's not always the one that you want to, to read. And when you talk about angle, does that, uh, this might sound stupid, but are you yeah. talking about like basically like I'm going to go interview someone, but I have like a pre-framed idea of like what I want to pull out of it? Or like, yeah. what, what is angle? Sure. Yeah. I mean, really, one of the like best books you... about journalism is called sort of follow the story. The idea being that you can go in with sort of a set thesis, but it sort of evolves over time. So when you meet, um, you know, someone like Jack Dorsey, for example, you might go to Square. The first time he showed me the card reader, I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is cool. You know, this is an e-commerce company. And then you realize as you start to talk to the people who are involved, someone like Robert Anderson, who came from Apple, he actually was the first one who came up with the app symbol on Twitter. He was just, oh, okay. yeah, he's, he's a really smart guy. Yeah, but yeah. he's one of the best designers that uh, I, I've, I've come to know. And I realized it was more of a design story. The things that they do, it's so elegant, the way they produce their products and the way they design their hardware. And you start sort of realizing there's a deeper story than just, hey, look at this, oh, this yeah. iPhone card reader is going to disrupt e-commerce, or they're going to start charging you know, X, Y, and Z for a bunch of small businesses and start processing things you know, on an annual basis that are like billions of dollars. It, it, you've got to move beyond that. So angle is not, it almost sounds dirty when you say angle. It's like, I'm looking for that. You know, oh, yeah, that, right, the dirty. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, always, always. Um, <laughs> the filthiest say, of the yeah, stories, right. yeah, no, frank, frankly, that's what no, gets the Place. Season, but, yeah. um, but yeah, that's what we mean by angle. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if that. that, that no, no, it so. does. What I'm, what I'm trying to really think about is like, is do you, you obviously don't have to be a big company to have an angle. Like, if you're a small company, then you really could just focus in on whether you care about design or whatever it is. And it doesn't matter if you're actually like in a marketplace where you're trying to sell an e-commerce prod product, but yeah. you're saying there could be a deeper story. Like three people get together to start a weekend for some reason to change the world and they yes. should just get that into your inbox or get that into your message somehow. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing that I would advise you to do is everything when you're starting a company is a story. Um, if you've ever read uh, the sort of the Facebook effect uh, and sort of huh? reading back to the early days about Facebook, I mean, every single page in that book could be a story on Business Insider. It's like Mark Zuckerberg and his team named all of their servers after characters from Top Gun. That, oh, that's like gotcha. I, that's like an article. Or like Jack Dorsey when he yeah, started Square. Yeah, there's so much personality coming out of it. One okay. of the clever things he did was go around and he would charge journalists. So at the end of the, like, I don't know, the several months of them sort of doing their stories, he had collected like $750 from like journalists alone. I could see doing a story about that just because it's so fun and clever okay. and sort of something you would click on. Um, so it doesn't have to be always sort of so, I guess, yeah. promotional. Uh, right. It can be something that says more about the, the type of entrepreneur, the type of character that, that he is and the type of culture that he wants to build. Actually, it's really helpful. I do think I'm getting kind of a sense for how you're looking for a zig opposed to a zag, like something yeah. that's like a little bit different, but it's still me. It's still representative of what you are as a company. Okay, so let me jump over to this. Uh, let's see, we have a couple more minutes. So, um, talk, to, talk about some of the common characteristics that the most popular articles have. Like, yeah. what are what are the things that you notice that seem to trigger the most? Yeah, I would say um, sort of the unexpected is always the best. Um, uh, I'll give you a, a sort of solid example. One of the more um, popular articles that we had written recently um, was about. This, uh, I don't know if you remember when Steve Jobs first launched the iPhone, the first call he made from the iPhone was actually to a Starbucks. And when he called, the, it was just a random oh, yeah, Starbucks, and he ordered 4,000 lattes, and then he hung up. And there was actually someone like on the receiving. It was a prank call. Oh, it was literally a prank call. And the, the woman answered. She was like, "Who is calling?" Little did you know, it was Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Yeah. And um, so, heard that much so stuff, five yeah. years later, we actually tracked down her and we talked to her and, oh, and cool. informed her that she was talking, Starbucks helped us, it was had great. Had anybody ever told her? No, she, she had no idea. She found out, I think, I think remember? some customers used to come in and, and people would still call and keep ordering 4,000 lattes in some sort of homage to, to Steve Jobs. And so sort of tracking her down and sort of talking That's to her cool. was like this really unexpected, quirky, fun idea that really, I don't know, told something more about uh, either Starbucks that they're willing to even have us there, but it was also just a fun story to read. And uh, for like a startup, with with, um, I think a good example would be um, like Aaron Levy from Box, um, who's one of the, the the biggest characters I know. And you think about Box, it's like a cloud storage company. It's in the enterprise. It's not. It's not. It's kind of boring. 
Uh, but when you talk to Aaron Levy and you, you realize that the type of lessons that he brings to box, the, the sort of really quirky personality traits that he has, uh, you know, he wears like sneakers with orange laces like all the time. Um, he is very, very willing to say very negative things about Microsoft at, uh, without me even asking. Right. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he, 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 he sort of makes the story on its own. And, and, you know, it's something you want to read about more than you would a press release. Okay. I gotcha. And now, so what did you end up titled? What's the title of the article with the Steve Jobs Starbucks girl? Uh, I mean, is, this, is it like a big question mark that you wrote I think there? it's like, like uh, what is she doing Steve now? Steve Jobs' or? prank call is still haunting Starbucks or something okay. like that. Yeah. Is, okay. Or Steve Jobs' ghost is still ordering 4,000 lattes. I don't know. Okay. And then yeah. while, uh, when you put Steve Jobs on <laughs> the headline, it really helps, I'll be honest. Just squeeze it in. Yeah. Cat memes and yeah. anything you get in there. Um, okay. So then, so the last thing I want to talk about is if you were a startup, like if you had to put yourself in the position of, you know, whatever vertical you like the most, the startup, how would you go about it um, if you, say you had your product kind of to a point where it's working and it's kind of like where a lot of these are, what would you do? What would your first step be? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the best first step that you can, can do, especially if you're a small startup, and, 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 and let's assume that you have a good product. Um, you want to reach out directly to the journalist and sort of just send them a note. It doesn't have to be so self-interested. It might just be like, hey man, I'm working on this thing. I don't, it's not ready to show, I'm not ready to show it to you yet. Would you have 15 minutes? Could we go out, grab a coffee, love to talk? Or maybe just sort of develop a relationship. You might, you know, meet him at a place like downtown uh, in Vegas or at South by Southwest. And the first email you send him, it doesn't have to be like, hey man, write about Check us. It, it, it yeah. should be like, hey man, like, you know, it was really great meeting you. I uh, actually met this other guy who you should met. Or, you know, sort of help along, help along and, and don't always be so self-promotional and build a relationship. Um, I do find one thing that just never works is like the smallest startup, you know, might be a two-person team. They don't even have, you know, seed funding. And yet a PR person's contacting me on behalf of them. And I just feel like there's something inauthentic oh, yeah, about yeah. that, you know? And uh, there's something more genuine about them coming directly and just saying, hey, could we grab some coffee? I'd love to talk about what I'm really passionate about. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so people can check you out on Twitter, Austin, oh, yeah. Austin Carr. Um, do, you, do you do any other blogging besides Fast Company? Or, or you tell me, what kind of shout outs can we give for you? What kind of <laughs> no, call to action do you have? Um, no, no, just uh, Fast Company, it's a, uh, we love writing about people like you guys. So uh, I hope you enjoy reading what we write about and it uh, helps inspire you. And, and, and please, you know, uh, buy the magazine. It's, it's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming yeah. out to check yeah, out the so project. Much. And yeah, thank you very much. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs>